and he knew that it would be difficult to rent the apartment again before fall. You can see the rent income going over the hill. And I still don't believe you intend to move. <laughs> After years in the renting business, I have taught me, you know, I've learned, not because you want them to remove the picture from the newspaper, but because something greater, there's a greater interior force, there's a greater, remember this idea of the two reasons, is movement and stop, you know, taking pictures of his kids. Because they understood where he was coming from, they actually care. That's really huge. That's super powerful. So next thing is um, when Cyrus H.K. Curtis was a poor boy from Maine, he was starting his media center, which was designed uh, to make him millions as the owner of the Saturday Evening Post. So it was like this journalist place um, and the owner of the Ladies Home Journal. But the challenge was like he couldn't afford to pay his contributors the prices that other magazines paid. And so because he couldn't afford to hire first class authors to write for money alone, he applied to their nobler motives. Remember guys, you can use social skills to literally create the same amount of value that would take other competitors in the marketplace dollars, dollars, like thousands, hundreds, thousands, millions of dollars to create. Um, it all comes down to appealing to people's real internal reasons and giving them a drive, a need, a want, an urge to work and help and assist and grow with you as a part of a mastermind. So what he did was really, really interesting. He persuaded um, a really cool author, Louisa Mac Alcott, who was the one we talked about earlier, um, to write for him when she was at the flood tide of her fame. And he did it by offering to send a check for a hundred dollars, which is about a thousand dollars, to her, not to her, but to her favorite charity. How cool is that? How powerful is that? That appeals to her real reasons. That appeals to her internal motives. That appeals to her because she wants to support her favorite charity. Now, what's cool is, you know, the she talks about this idea um, that he would, that there's some tough people, right? And a lot of times it's difficult to convince people to do whatever you want or you might have to work with tough people that you're working with. And so maybe sending a check to a charity won't work perfectly. And Dale kind of has this really cool thing he says, um, and he replies with this story about James Thomas, who was a former student of his, and it was so interesting because what happens is it's just so cool. So six clients uh, of a certain automobile company refused to pay their bills for servicing. And none of the clients protested the um, entire bill, but each claimed that some little one tiny charge was incorrect. And in each case, the client had signed for the work done, so the company knew that it was right. I mean, they literally signed off and said, yes, they did this work. And the, ch the first problem, the first mistake, the first challenge that they encountered was they actually went and they told these clients that they were right, and they knew it. And they said, we are right, you are wrong. And that's the worst thing you can do. That is awful. Um, but unfortunately, that's that's how they went about it. And so here are um, sort of the steps that the credit department took to collect these overdue bills. Um, and spoiler alert, it was not successful. So the first thing they did was they called each client and told them bluntly that they had to collect a bill that was long past due. We need your money now doesn't give any emphasis on the benefit for them. Similarly, they made it very plain that the company was absolutely and unconditionally correct, therefore the client was absolutely and unconditionally wrong. You're wrong! One of the worst things you can tell somebody. Awful. Next, they intimidated the client. Um, and the company, and they said that they knew more about automobiles than the client could ever even hope to know. So what was there to argue about? And of course, the result of all this was that they argued a whole lot. They were just constantly bickering back and forth and back and forth because they went about this the complete wrong way. They didn't collaborate. They didn't communicate. They didn't work together, and it screwed them over. What happened, I mean, none of this led to success, and at this stage of affairs, the credit manager was about to open a fire with a battery uh, of legal talent when, fortunately, the matter came across the attention of the general manager, who realized that a legal case wouldn't do any better than the arguments they were having right now. And he realized that they could save a ton of money in legal fees by investigating the faulted client. And what's cool is he discovered that they all had the reputation of paying their bills promptly. Something was wrong here drastically wrong about the method of collection because these clients usually paid their bills and if people usually pay their bills and then they stop paying you their bills and they usually pay their bills and they don't pay you their bills and they usually pay their bills and they don't pay you their bills the difference is one word, you. So you need to change your behavior, your actions, and your communication to better excite those individuals, better excite those clients to pay you. And it does it's not just like making money, it's also connecting people, it's also coming together with people, it's also creating a team, creating a group, creating an idea, creating collaboration. If everyone else around you can succeed in a group project except for you, all you have to do is admit that this is difficult, admit you're having trouble, move past that, and say, look, now that I know I have a challenge to overcome, let's overcome it. The first step is admitting 
the second step is taking action, do the right thing. It's not that tough. And so he told James Thomas to collect these uncollectible accounts. And here are the steps that he took. Because remember, it's all you. And for Thomas, it was all him. It was his duty to make this happen. So he visited each client and he was likewise to collect a bill long past due. A bill that he knew was absolutely right, but he did not say a word about the bill. He explained that he called to find out what the company had done, what his company had done or failed to do. And he made it clear that he had heard the client's story and had no opinion to offer. And he told uh, the client uh, that they made no, that his company had made no claims to be perfect, no claims to be the best ever. They had made mistakes and all they wanted to do was figure out what went right and what went wrong for the client. And he told them he was interested only in listening, only in their product. And that, you know, obviously the client knows more about the, they were selling cars, right? So the client knows more about cars than the car than anybody else in the world. And that the client was the authority on the subject. And so he went to their offices and he let the client talk and listen and listen and listen and listen with all the interest and sympathy that he wanted and had expected. Interest, sympathy, you're golden. That's exactly what he did. He let him talk, let him talk, let him talk. And finally, when the client was in a reasonable mood, uh, the, the guy, he put the whole thing up for his sense of fair play. And here's what he did. He applied to his nobler motives. It was a very, very powerful decision. He, he got their bill, right? And their bill had a bunch of items on it. And there were just a couple of items that they weren't too happy about or that they said were wrong. And so he gets this bill and he says, first, I want you to know, I also feel this matter has been badly mishandled. You've been inconvenienced and annoyed and irritated by one of our representatives. That should never have happened. I am sorry, and as a representative of the company, I apologize. As he sat there and listened to this guy's side of the story, uh, the, the, this guy, he could not help, the client could not help be impressed by the generosity. And similarly, this is what the guy said, right? He said, I am so impressed by your fairness and by your patience, and I think you're amazing. And I'm gonna degrade myself, I'm gonna degrade my energy, I'm gonna degrade my ego for you, and I'm gonna apologize to you and suck up to you. And because you're so fair-minded and patient, I'm gonna ask you to do something for me. It's something that you can do better than anybody else, something that you know more about than anybody else. And he handed them this bill. He said, look over this bill, okay? I know it is safe for me to ask you to adjust it just as you would do if you were the president of my company. I'm gonna leave it all up to you, whatever you say goes. And uh, you know, he gave him the bill and he said, you know, adjust it, do whatever you need to do. And the bills range from about $1,500 today to about $4,000 today. Uh, but the clients, they didn't give themselves the best of it all the time. One uh, of the clients refused to pay a penny of the disputed charges, but all of the other five clients gave the company the best of it and gave them most of the money. And what's cool is that within the next two years, they delivered new cars to all six of these clients. They kept selling over and over because the lifetime value is so huge. All they had to do was listen to them, let them feel like they were in authority, make them feel like they were the decision maker and they can determine their own bill and they're above the company, they're above the billing department, they're the most powerful person there. And then, as they feel like they're way up here, they're gonna keep buying more and more and more and more because most people don't wanna screw other people over. Most people just wanna be what they call fair and then they just want a feeling of significance. It's not that tough. Experience has taught me, says this guy, that when no information can be secured about the client, the only sound basis on which to proceed is to assume that they are sincere, honest, trust, truthful, and willing and anxious to pay the charges once convinced they are correct. Um, what's really interesting is this is a really big concept, especially if you start, guys start to serve like products or you start your online businesses. Um, is this idea of like refunds, right? So like I, I don't want to like put it straight into e-commerce, but think about it like this idea of if you walk into a store and somebody comes into a gas station, right? And you're you're inside this gas station and in you know you're sitting here and someone walks in and they say, hey, you know I put twenty dollars in the pump over here and um, <clears throat> I put my money in, but none of the gas 
or, or um, I put my credit card and put $20 in, I don't know. Um, it depends on what kind of gas pump it is. I never really worked at a gas station. Um, and he says, look, I put my money in, but it didn't, none of the gas came out. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to type. Um, I want a refund or I want more gas, I want $20 worth of gas, um, cause it didn't work. Now, what's interesting is, you know, maybe this guy's lying, maybe he's not lying, but let's look at both sides of the equation, right? You wanna look at the upside, you wanna look at the downside. So the upside is um, this guy's lying and you correctly call out that he's lying and you get to keep your $20. Now the downside is that this guy's telling the truth and the pump actually broke or something went wrong and he lost his $20, but he didn't just lose his $20 because if you don't give him that $20 back, what's gonna happen is more than the loss of $20 worth of value. In reality, you're gonna lose the entire lifetime value of that client if they don't actually ever come back again because they get pissed off because you ripped them off. Now, think about this in any sort of situation where you're servicing people, you're giving them products, you're giving them service. Um, like for me, like I will always, 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 if someone asks for a refund, like dude, instantly, you bet, 100%. Because the last thing I want to do is create a, just, I don't want to like destroy value for them, right? I want them to feel significant, feel important, and it's worth so much more to just take this little tiny loss and not lose the entire lifetime value of a client, and then similarly create an insane amount of goodwill that'll return itself tenfold over the next couple of, you know, however long your life cycles are for your product to come back over and over and over again. Because the downside is so much worse than the upside. You know, you need 20 bucks versus losing a client forever. Like that's really hard. But for the person that's coming in and saying that they lost their money, like that's the situation they're in, you know? If it really happened to them, they're gonna be pissed, they'll never come back again. And if they are lying, maybe they are lying. Maybe one out of 10 people are lying. But in reality, the, the gains from helping people and the gains from being generous, the gains from connecting and the gains from uh, successful service of your clients is going to be worth so much more than the one out of 100 people that try to pull one over on you because it just doesn't matter, you know? I see people all the time and, um, well not for my courses but for other courses, right? You'll have guys and they literally, I don't really want to include this, so can you just cut it at I have people all the time? Just like, just cut it at I have people all the time because I don't, I don't want to tell, that's not a good story, I don't think. To put it differently and perhaps more clearly, um, people are honest and want to discharge their obligations. They want to be real with you. The exception of that rule is comparatively few. Um, and Dale is convinced that the individuals who are inclined to chisel will in most cases react favorably if you make them feel that you consider them honest, upright, and fair. So remember, like anyone that you come across should be, you want to think that they are honest, they are upright, they are fair and they're a quality person. Um, that really kind of wraps up this idea, this very foundational concept of appealing to people's higher motives, right? And understanding that there are two reasons people do things, two reasons, and you want to appeal to their higher motive. That's the goal, that's the foundation, that's the strategy. You really, really want to have an overarching reason, a reason that's bigger than you, a reason that's bigger than them, that they should do something, that they should internally justify something logically after you sell it to them emotionally. And by sell it to them, I mean like convince them of something or, or convince them this is the way to go, this is the strategy, this is the goal, this is what you need to do. And then you follow it up by appealing to their higher motives, right? That's the foundation. Um, really, 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 really cool, 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 cool concept. So, I hope you guys get a ton of AR to this module. Go out there, apply it, like absolutely crush it. Really, really try to go and appeal to someone's higher motives. And uh, I hope you guys get a ton of AR to it. Thank you guys so, 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 so much. I will see you in the next module. Bye!